Yeah. We're pushing human limits is what yes. we're doing, right? We're pushing velocity limits. We're pushing, oh, I gotta just, oh, I gotta rip this slider. I gotta rip this fastball now down. Now do it quicker. And then do it faster. Injury suck is going to lead off the show. There were some fans in the chat asking about injury suck. And I said, yes, in fact, that will lead off the show. Charge the Mound is taking a back seat because the injury epidemic continues in Major League Baseball. Just this weekend alone, we have Shane Bieber undergoing season ending Tommy John surgery, which sucks. He is a free agent after this season. Mm. We'll get into the team impact for all of these injuries as well. There is significant damage to the elbow of Spencer Strider, best strikeout artist in our sport today among starting pitchers. It does not look good for him. I mean, there's even some others. Well, on Garrett here. Cole is he has UCL and he's a, so far avoided Tommy John. Right. They lost Loisaga. They lost Loisaga. elbow surgery for the Yankees. Right. I mean, there's some other anything. dudes that might have problems too. Did you see Gossman the other day get lifted after like the second? Yeah, but he inning? had a shoulder in spring training. Shoulder, but three miles an hour down on. His heater, he also Max Fried doesn't right, look right. He also threw one right down the middle that certain empire called a ball. <laughs> We're going to get into that, too. Here's David O'Brien on Strider. It wasn't good, said Brian Snicker, manager of the Atlanta Braves. Chose damage to the ulnar collateral ligament. So we'll get into the individuals and the team impact. Kratz, let's start with the global impact, because it's not just Major League Baseball. It's not just the pros or college or high school. It's Little League 2. We have injury after injury to arms in our sport. And it does seem like it's getting worse. I know it's been a problem for a while, but it's never good when it continues to be more of a problem. And it looks like we're on pace for more elbow surgeries than ever. Doesn't seem like it is getting worse. There's been 52 Tommy John surgeries, I think, this year. 52 compared to... I think that's the pace, dude. Oh, their pace? I was wrong on that. At the current, that yeah. Dan yes. Clark put that one out. At, at this pace, we'll be at, at 52 in Major okay. League Baseball. Yes. That, to me, 31 up from the average of 25 last year is, that is a, that is a huge jump. But if we hit 52, we're just on pace for it. If we hit that, how, like, it's it's an epidemic. And to me... The the biggest, as much as people are going to say, oh, well, now Shane Bieber's not going to make $25 million a year. Yes, $25 million a year is a bad for Shane Bieber to miss out on. All these pitchers, Yuri Perez, Alcantara, all guys that are down with Tommy John's surgery right now are missing out on a lot of money. But you talk about the global game of baseball, the actual game of Major League Baseball – missing out on so many fans because if your team isn't playing, if I'm a Phillies fan and I'm watching the Phillies, I'll watch them no matter who's throwing. Bullpen game, you know, they throw a position player out there. I'll watch them because they're my team. If I'm looking at another game, the first thing I do is not look to see who's leading off or hitting third. It's who's pitching. Ooh, that looks like a good matchup. And when you have all these guys down, notable names down, and there's a chance there could be more, it hurts the game. It hurts viewership to watch the entire league in general. Well, of course. I mean, it sucks, but it's starting younger and younger. It's starting at younger ages. Kids are, you know, there's, gosh, how many high school kids have I seen already this year having Tommy John? You know, they're 16, 17, 18 years old. So there's something going on. Um, you know, hopefully we're going to get some expert analysis, I think, tomorrow, right? We're mm-hmm. possibly going to have one of the big doctors on that does a lot of these. Yes. I know I know a guy that I used to work with named Chuck Wolf here in Orlando uh, has done been doing a study on this for almost 10 years now. And he's, he, he's come up with reasons why. And he's seen a bunch of rehab guys from Tommy John and – Pro, he's worked with a ton of pro guys and, and amateur guys that have had it, and he he has a different theory on hip mobility because um, a lot of guys that have it, their hips don't their hips don't load, so when they hit their foot hits, they spin, which puts all the torque on the elbow. So I mean, he has a different 
thing that I haven't heard anybody talk about. And he's done study after study. He studied, I don't know, he says 80% or something of the guys he studied have this problem. So, I, I mean, again, there, it, you know, people are saying pitch clock. Okay. People are saying velocity. Okay. People are saying weighted balls. People are saying this. People are saying that. Like nobody really, problem is nobody knows. It's not going to end until we try to figure out a reason to do it. And, and it starts for me at the younger ages. You got to figure out a way. Is it, do we go back to start? I mean, if you saw Justin Verlander's comments, starters have to go deeper in games. They don't go all out on every pitch. You know, and I mean, I know that's the way you did pitching coaches and organizations want you to do it. But do we go back to, again, we've, I've talked about this, where you make your starters learn how to get through the third time through and not give everything they have on every single pitch. I don't know what the answers are, but someone's got to figure something out because this is, this is crazy. There's too many guys going down. You know, too many guys are on their second Tommy John. Too many guys are having their first, and it's big name guys. That's the thing. It's not like I mean, not that anyone in the major leagues isn't the, isn't the guy, but these are like the stars that are going down. What's the common What's the common thread? Is my like I agree. You know, maybe there's hip mobility issues. Maybe you know, shoulder range of motion, IR range of motion, all that stuff. But what's the common thread? Because somebody, nobody had hip mobility back in the eighties and there wasn't as many Tommy John surgeries. Was there as many UCL tears back then? And we just didn't know about it. I played, I'm assuming I played three quarters of my career with an 80% torn UCL. Last time my elbow ever hurt was 2005. In 2017, I got an MRI all my own because I couldn't straighten my arm or bend my arm or yeah, bend my arm completely. And they went in there, found bone chips in there. And they also said, when they went in to get the bone chips, they go, does your elbow ever hurt you? I was like, never. It never hurts. I woke up that morning and it didn't bend or straighten out. I said, and he said, oh, because you have an 80% torn UCL. Like it's almost all the way gone. So when that happened, I don't know. You see the fighting? What fighting? MLB versus MLBPA. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that listen, it's all about negotiations. I mean, over injuries, like, can, can, can I kindly say, stop, enough. We don't need to hear about the labor strike or the labor strife every single day about everything. So you had, let's do the PA first. Despite unanimous player opposition and significant concerns regarding health and safety, the commissioner's office reduced the, reduced the length of the pitch clock last December, just one season removed from imposing the most significant rule change in decades. Since then, our concerns about the health impacts of reduced recovery time have only intensified. The league's unwillingness thus far to acknowledge or study the effects of these profound changes is an unprecedented threat to our game and its most valuable asset, the players. MLB's reply, this statement ignores the empirical evidence and much more significant long-term trend over multiple decades of velocity and spin increases that are highly correlated with arm injuries. Nobody wants to see pitchers get hurt in this game, which is why MLB is currently undergoing a significant comprehensive research study into the causes of this long-term increase, interviewing prominent medical experts across baseball, which baseball, which to date has been consistent with an independent analysis by Johns Hopkins University that found no evidence to support that the introduction of the pitch clock has increased injuries. In fact, JHU found no evidence that pitchers who worked quickly in 2023 were more likely to sustain an injury than those who worked less quickly on average. JHU also found no evidence that pitchers who sped up their pace were more likely to sustain an injury than those who did not. Now, remember, we have that story I, from Ken Rosenthal with Dr. Meester, who we might speak with soon, who said he's seeing more significant arm injuries in the past year. It's not about the number of injuries, which we're also seeing go up, but he's saying he's seeing worse damage within the elbow injuries when he goes under the hood. But, okay. I, I, as much as I want to agree with the union on this one, like the pitch clock, and I know Max Scherzer said it and some other people have come out and said it. Mm -hmm. Isn't it just a combination of all these factors coming in together? It's yes. not just the pitch clock. It's not just this. It's not just that. I mean, the pitch clock's easy to blame because the numbers are there. A lot of these guys are on their second one from last year, right? I mean, DeGrom, second one, right? Uh, Dustin May, second one. There's a lot of guys that are on their second one. So they were hurt before. Mm -hmm. And they say the second one lasts, what, five to seven years usually? Or something like that. And then that what DeGrom had, and then whammo, he had it again. Th this point, I understand. It's like, 
we're already pushing it, right? We're, we're, we're pushing, pushing we're it. pushing human limits is what yes. we're doing, right? We're pushing velocity limits. We're pushing, oh, I got to just, oh, I got to rip this slider. I got to rip this fastball now down. Now do it quicker. And then do it faster. Okay, fine. But there's guys like Mark Burley, Justin Verlander always walked, worked fairly quickly. I mean, he didn't have arm problems until he got older. I, I mean, But Burley didn't throw 100. And... But he did early in his career. He threw harder than, you know, people would just remember as a thumber. But he was sure. in the low 90s early in his career. It wasn't like he was always 85. Uh, there's, there's, there's more to it, but no one knows. And until we – there's not enough data out there either on anything, any of this. It's been one year of the pitch clock just because <laughs> the injuries went up. I guarantee there's a year you can pick out somewhere along the way where, hey, there was more obliques. Well, was it because something changed? I don't know. More hamstrings. I, I don't know. It just sucks because this is such a major blow and because the guys miss so much time, right? They miss a full year and longer sometimes. It's like if you have this now, you're almost missing this year and most of next year. That could be the case with Strider. If Strider has to go under the knife again, he's probably not back until and the year. And he already had it, didn't year. he? Didn't he already have Tommy John? Or he had it about five years ago. Uh, See, there you go. So was this the pitch clock or was just this the cadaver ligament or wherever he got it from? No, our, our game is fucked. Actually, the answer from the player side, in my mind, Kratz, should be, hey, we've had a problem for a while. It's getting worse and teams don't care because they value velocity when they're scouting. They value pitch shape when they're scouting. They value changing you when they acquire you if need be. The Red Sox are a good example right now. They're pitching well in the first week or so, better than some expected. They're throwing like way more secondary pitches. Like they're, they're changing the arsenal from some of these guys, which also could be a little bit of smoke and mirrors. But point is, a guy comes over and they're like, oh, we love your slider. Let's throw it 80% of the time. Or, hey, let's try and get a few more ticks of velocity on you, which you know, AJ alluded to the other day. Let's, let's chuck that weighted ball all day long. All of that shit probably is not good for you. And what players are standing up and being like, you know what? I know you brought you guys have really, really helped a lot of pitchers. In my situation, I had a five ERA last year. I know you guys brought me over to do better. I'm not gonna listen. I want to stay healthy. Nobody's nobody's lining up to say that. So whose fault is it? It's just like it's just like when I voted down for collisions at the plate. As a catcher, you would think I would have said. No, no, definitely eliminate collisions at the plate. I saw it as a value as somebody who got 140 at-bats per season, played about 60 games, started about 40 of them. I saw it as a value for me to stay in the big leagues, to be able to withstand a collision, and I blocked the plate as hard as I could block the plate with all 250 pounds of me. Did I know the injury risk? I did know the injury risk. So – is there a happy medium? I'm sure there is something there, but I know as a player, if you strive to make the big leagues and you strive to win and be the best player, not even talking about contracts, just talking about be the best player that you can be in the big leagues, you're going to take that risk. Well, here's my thing. Matt Whistler. Uh, uh, Matt Whistler's a guy I played with, caught his debut, did his whole deal when he came with the Braves, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He went to the Rays. He was a starter, and he was he was a mid starter. I mean, he wasn't a great guy, but he was a serviceable major league starter. Five, yeah, he was a yeah. four to five guy, and depending on what team he's on, but he was a serviceable major league starter. He goes to the Rays, and they're like, "You're throwing nothing but sliders." His pitch chart was like ninety eight percent slider, two percent fastball, and then he <laughs> pitched there for a year, had a good year, gone. Gone. Like, then it was just gone. Just fell off the earth. I don't even know where he is. fell off the earth. Well, that too. But, I mean, it's like, gosh, you know, that's what teams do. The, the teams think that there's just – you know, Do teams do it? No. Well, there is just infinity amount of pitchers out there that can, they can just, all right, we'll go to the next one. 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 I mean, it's just – and, again, no player is going to say, well, no, I don't want to improve myself. I'll be the one guy that doesn't get hurt. Right? There's always in the back of your mind – I'm going to be the guy that can change the narrative. I'm going to be the guy because if you if you don't have that narr- if you don't have that thought in your head, you're not going to make it in, in, yep. in, to the highest level. So you're always like, oh, they think I can do this. Well, my arms never hurt in the past. I can do this. It'll, it won't hurt now. And then all of a sudden, guys like, ow, trainer, right? Or I mean, but that, it's the way it is. Tell, tell me this, AJ. Do you think you had things? And obviously, we're talking about a catcher 
who play who caught 135 games more than any catcher nowadays do you feel like you had any issues internally that you never got checked out because you were like you know what I'm going to go ahead and just play through this I mean I had plenty of times where I played when I probably shouldn't have played with with it I mean I broke my wrist I played two weeks later with a broken wrist I mean there's no doubt in my mind I mean I was like oh I, I can play I'm going to play I mean I remember when I was in Minnesota I caught a I caught a spike. I slid into first on like a weird play, and I clipped my bottom. That's why I stopped wearing metal spikes. But I clipped my spike, and it. And I should have. I was supposed to have ankle surgery, but I didn't. Um, and it still would bother me every once in a while. But that's why I wore plastic spikes. Like I mean, I went in and after the season, I got traded to the Giants, and I went into the doctor, and I'm like, man, this ankle's really bothering me. And they're like, well, you should have surgery. And I'm like, well, how long am I going to be out? And they're like, three to four months. And I'm like, yeah, no, we'll just we'll just figure it out. I'm not fast anyway, so I don't really need that ankle. <laughs> right? Who, made, who, but, made, I mean, who made the decision? Me. Who made the decision? Me. I made the decision. I okay. Like, yeah, no. Actually, it was after my San Francisco year. So this was two years after I heard it. Uh they went in, I went into the doctor in LA and I was like, my ankle's killing me. And they're like, you should have surgery. And I was like, no. And I, I was going to be a free agent. I knew. So I was like, I don't want to go into the free agency with a, on crutches with, with a surgically repaired ankle. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, no, I'm fine. I'm good. I played all year on it and I'll play, I can play with it. And then, but yeah, there was many a times where I was like hurt. Yeah. But this is like asking pitchers to chill or to take care of yourself when you only get valued a certain way. So I'll bring up two examples. One is Dr. James Andrews said, these kids are throwing 90 miles an hour, their junior year of high school, the ligament itself can't withstand this kind of force. We've learned in our research lab that baseball is a developmental sport. The Tommy John ligament matures at about age 26 in high school. The red line where the forces go beyond the tensile properties of the ligament is about 80 miles an hour, but many people brought up on social media. Good luck telling a high schooler to throw 80 miles an hour. He'll get torched at most high schools and he wouldn't even get into a division three school unless he's the ultimate knuckleballer or some shit. So that plus Justin Verlander getting asked about his thoughts on this situation. Here we go. Justin, what, what are your thoughts on just the last couple of days? We've seen a bunch of pitchers go down with injuries. There's been mm -hmm. a blame on both sides. What, what do you think? I don't know, man. It's tough. Um, I think the game has changed a lot. Uh, you know, I, 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 it, I think the, I think it'd be easiest to hear and blame the pitch clock. Um, you know, I think in reality, uh, you put everything together and um, everything has a little bit to, a little bit of influence. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing is the the, the, the style of pitching has changed so much. Um, you know, everybody's throwing as hard as they possibly can and um, spinning the ball as hard as they possibly can. And, um, you know, it's hard to deny those results. Obviously, uh, how can you? It's 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 a double-edged sword. How can you tell somebody to go out there and not do that when they're capable of throwing a hundred? And and you know this, this this young guy comes up and throws a pitch ninety-five and gives up a big homer, and everybody's like, "What the hell, man?" Um, so, you know, you, you want to go play D one now? You got to throw hard and you got to spin the ball well. You want to go to the minor leagues? You got to throw hard, spin the ball well. And you know, it all it all starts from here down. Um, the second that you start incentivizing pitching and guys are getting drafted because they can pitch and get guys out, then that goes down a level and then down a level and down a level. And you know, I, I just hope that. We don't wait too long because, uh, you know, it can, it can uh, you know, it's obviously a pandemic and it's going to take years to work itself out because everybody right now, Little League on, go look no further than Instagram. I can't, I can't look at my Instagram feed without seeing, you know, some kids trying to learn how to throw as hard as they can at 10 years old. I sure as hell didn't do that. You know, I didn't figure it out until college. I matured in my body. I was, you know, I, I, I say it all the time. If I looked, if I, if I came up in today's world, I don't know what would happen. My mechanics were a little different. I was tall, langly, lean, you know, lang skinny, lean, uh, weird, kind of hadn't hit my m maturity. Went to college, didn't get drafted, went to college and kind of grew into myself. And all of a sudden I started throwing hard. But it wasn't because I did some, you know, program to make me throw harder. Um, just so it's hard. That's why he's been pitching forever. But, but he, also, he nailed it on that point. It's going to take years to unwind well, it this. It is, but here, here's the other thing. Uh, everything, the, 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 the quote is longer now. We only had a minute and a half, but it's like four minutes. If you listen to the whole thing, everything he it's says good. is true. Yep. It's a really good thought out quote. His hat's fire. Kratz doesn't have that hat, so suck it, Kratz. But that hat was fire. <laughs> That's an A hat. <clears throat> you should mix in one of those. Um, but I think it's Space Cowboys or whatever they are, Sugarland. But, um, yeah. but, but, but the thing he said at the end where he's like, you know, I get my Instagram feed and every kid's trying to throw harder. Well, that's the thing. Everybody's chasing velocity. Everyone's doing pull downs where they run 
20 yards and, oh, I threw 90 miles an hour. Yeah, but when in baseball are you ever going to do that? Like, at what point are you ever going to do that? You're not. There's no point where a pitcher goes, it's not cricket where the guy's like, ah, oh, and they put the radar guy's like, oh, I hit 90, cool, right? It doesn't translate. But I scouts mean, dig that. I, I understand that, but here's the thing. Like, like you know, and I know Mark, our producer, is like, growing up, we didn't throw as hard, and Verlander said that. Like, you didn't go max effort. You were like, all right, how can I – if I can throw – 85 miles an hour and control it, or I can throw 90 and go phew, 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 all over the place. Now that scouts would rather see you throw 90 and throw eight balls, hey, hit 90, I can I can put him in there, rather than the guy that can go 85 and can go phew, phew. Plus kids, you know, weren't throwing curveballs till later because we were told not to do it. You know, now everyone's like, there's like, you turn on TV and there's like these eight-year-olds going, curveball, slider, change up, oh, two-seamer. Like, you're like, wait a second. You know, oh, but if you throw it proper, you know, you should be okay. That might be true, but everything has just changed. Yeah, and even if you get the kids to stop, if Dr. James Andrews says you're not fixing that until you're 26, then what, you're going to hold guys off for that long? No freaking way. No you, just, you just won't get discovered. Hey, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. We're back here every weekday, all year long, so do not miss an episode. The videos are coming in all day. Here's another video you might enjoy. Baseball, the way it should be covered.